It's my life. essentially organize uh, around issues that take a long time to solve, but with a sense of urgency. Um, I also am the state organizing manager for Black Workers Matter, um, which takes me across the state, not just, of course, registering people to vote, but also building power within our communities uh, around so many different issues. Like you could just close your eyes and about 50, 11 things will pop up in your head in terms of what are the issues in our community that need to be solved and need to be addressed? And so Black Voters Matter works with organizations like the People's Promise and Funds Up um, and all types of Black-led grassroots organizations to make sure that you all have what you need to actually address these issues. Um, and, and in terms of voting, I think it, you know, Jasmine and Brick are right that voting, everybody has to get out to do it. And I think that we have to start talking about this conversation using different words. And so, and so instead of saying voting all the time, sometimes we have to replace that word with survival. Because voter registration, mobilizing voters to the polls, voter education, all of these things are requirements for a people and for a community to actually make Good time. Yeah, yeah. So I'm closing the door, y'all. You know, is that my bag? Out there. Oh no, it was going oh, to be or something. Oh. Yeah. I just wanted um, them to be able to hear you. Yeah. Good enough, but yeah. Okay. So what do y'all think about like protests? Because like last year and a few years back, we had like a lot of 
Park protest going on. Shreveport, Louisiana was like on fire. And a lot, of, <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people like um they kind of like build their way through protests. They build their name and things like that through protesting. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people decided to run. Mm -hmm. Um so what do you guys think about people who protest versus people who actually want to change the politics? <clears throat> what do you what do you what well, do you say about that? Well I, I say well, we got a lot of people that's, uh, that was that be a thing about their protest. Hold on, <laughs> really. we seen a lot of comments. <laughs> no comment. I think I think I think people get the concept of just protesting. We it's our right to protest, but what are you protesting for? If you're not if you're not trying to push policies, you're not doing you doing it doing it for nothing. Mm -hmm. If you notice when if you see, because I'm gonna say me and Amari, because I always me and Amari. <laughs> but when you see me and Amari out there, we already got we already have a plan of action. We already have a solution. We already have a policy that we're gonna. We're not gonna fight no battle without having a policy to put in place and knowing we can win this battle. Because you can sometimes you gotta pick your battle. Some battles you don't want. I don't like to lose. Right. But if I feel like I'm gonna lose, I'm not gonna get in until I get back in to re-strategize. But as far as people running for office, um, now it's what what we have. Like we have a majority black city. Yeah. And, and we have black leaders, but what are black leaders are doing? If they're not doing what was was for the people, if they're not doing the work of the people, why are they here? Yeah, yeah. why are they here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they want to get mad at they want to get mad at people like me and Amari. Yeah. And feel like we have to seek permission. Right. You have. I mean, you have men think we supposed to seek permission from them to do the work for the people. And these are y'all own organizations. These yeah. are not. Oh no! And we no don't ask them for no damn form. <laughs> right. yeah. so, like, why do y'all think y'all can just tell us how to run my organization? This is this has my name on it. My you know passion behind it. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about it, about protesting <clears throat> and policy? I think they're both necessary. I think that again, like when we think about these separate things, these things separately, like protests and activism and voting and organizing, I think we do ourselves a disservice mm -hmm. um, because they all go together. Yeah. Um, and everybody is not going to do everything, mm -hmm. right? You know, we do need everybody to vote. Yeah. 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 So we'll put that there, right? We, <laughs> we need everybody to vote, but also yeah. on a on a higher level and even on the ground level, we need people to play their roles. Right. And so there will be protesters. Mm -hmm. There will be people who need to be vetted and chosen by the community to run mm -hmm. for office. Right. Um, but we cannot depend on these people to do what is in our best interest unless we hold them accountable to do. Right. So while partly it's their job, like you accepted the job, you qualified, you ran, you spent your money, mm -hmm. people voted for you, it's your job to keep your promise, but it's our job as the people to say, hey, you said you were going to do A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. Where you at on it? Right. Um, you said you would stop this. Why is mm -hmm. it still happening? Right. Um, and so we have to build that power structure to actually address these issues and make people scared. That hey, maybe y'all might just recall my butt mm -hmm. if I don't do what I said I was going to do. Straight, scan your ass straight. Yes, I got it. No, sometimes people are in these seats because nobody is running against them. Mm -hmm. Like it, they're just basically just. And that's our that's our fault. And two, when we put them in the seats, we don't hold them accountable. Yeah, yeah. we we say, oh, we're gonna wait another four years. We ain't gonna worry about it. Mm -hmm. Listen, or that's my friend, that's my church member, that's mm -hmm. so and so. Yeah. So we, we, we sick of it. But our plans are what I, what we want to do. I want we want to have a town hall, but we don't want to call it a town hall. Mm -hmm. In every neighborhood to come up with the agenda, the people's agenda, and show the people how to hold it accountable. Just like Amari said, if you don't do A, B, and C, we're gonna get y'all in three, six, nine, nine days. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get you in ninety days and we're gonna recall, we got and we're gonna keep on doing this process over and over and over until we get somebody that's gonna represent the people. Yeah. It's good, it's good. Well, in in this community, like a lot of people don't really know like what to vote for, who to vote for. They just like for example, you see Chavez Shreveport everywhere. Everywhere. So I was just saying that today. It's like 
do we really know him or is everybody gonna vote for him because they see his name everywhere and it's a good marketing strategy? So you run the risk of that happening mm -hmm. when you let these political campaigns, and I've worked on a political campaign and, mm -hmm. and still behind one person, mm -hmm. um, you know, and push them, but like, we got to get creative yeah. and innovative about how we educate our people. Yeah. It might not all be a church meeting or a meeting down at, at a municipal plaza or mm -hmm. where the mayor be at. Mm -hmm. You know, it, we have to go into the neighborhoods. Like Rika said, we want to have a town hall, but we don't really want to call it a town hall. Mm -hmm. Because how many town halls have we had mm -hmm. that have led to absolutely nothing, mm -hmm. right? We, we want to have a real conversation that actually... Um, produces action mm -hmm. like we're tired of talking mm -hmm. like we've been talking and talking and talking for generations yeah it's conversation over it's yeah. time to move but we still have to find a way to really have a have a discussion with people mm -hmm. to where they walk away and say you know what Chavez, Mario Chavez this is your track record mm -hmm. when you were a commissioner this is how you voted mm -hmm. did it benefit my community or was it a detriment to my community mm -hmm. and then we can make a decision around those answers. Right. But we gotta find a way to get that to the people. Right. Mm -hmm. So what's like a good way we can try to do that? Like we're gonna do the town hall meetings, but how are we gonna get the word out? Like are we going door to door or actually um that's what we're gonna do. Like you gotta we gotta grassroot it. We don't have to canvas the area first and let them know look we gotta we have a we have a block party. We can call it a block party. Yeah. We call it this We want maybe we wanna hear from y'all. We're not gonna talk, we just gonna write down the issues that you want. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna come, we're gonna show you how to put a plan together and show you how to hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. And and take it to the person that's supposed to rep that's representing you in your area, like, look, if you wanna go about this, we're gonna bring you tomorrow to get your ass up out here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not even consistent. Like I'm yeah. like, okay, we come at this time, okay, we go, and I'm there, and yeah. then like the next week, I'm like, okay, girl, right? Like, you know, so yeah. how do we get people interested in? Hey, this is important. This is where you come and voice your yeah. your you know concerns, everything that's going on in the community. How we get? I think they gotta understand the process. Our people don't know the process goes. What do the city council supposed to do? Mm -hmm. When they understand the process, then they will be they more eager to come and know they got like like they didn't know our people didn't know that they can call a public service commissioner because they build so high than right. normal. Right. So it's like the positions like the, the positions like those, our people don't know what, what they do. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they do. They know they can call you certain people, they ain't work for y'all. Right. So I think it I think right this between twenty twenty and now it's the people they they wake up so they can see like that. We can go down there and tell them folks off and go find this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think it's I think I I think I think the, the accountability standpoint they doing it and the um, city council meeting, the commission meeting, and the school board meeting. We can see it online now. Mm -hmm. We don't got to be there. Mm -hmm. We know what's on the agenda before the agenda. But as we, we just said, we got to show them how to look at the agenda before they. You know what's going to get me to talk about. Where is the agenda? Where do you find it? On the city government page, Street okay. City Government page. Okay. And we probably need to do something to show them on Facebook how to get on that page. Yeah, yeah. that would be good. Yeah. yeah. And go through each agenda item because when I first started going to meetings, I was like, what even is this? Like, first reading of ordinances, second reading. Like, I didn't know what that meant, but that's actually a legislative process yeah. where things are literally passing into law. Yeah. That governs our city, yeah. and so it's important to be able to decode. Like, and I say decode because our city council people ain't yeah. right. Like, they're not telling us what it is. Right. Like, no, city officials are not educating us on this is what this means, or I'm voting on this today, and here's why. Um, but what I wanted to say is, power concedes nothing without a demand, yeah. and so basically, we cannot expect for someone in power just to here you go. You want that? There you go. You can have it. Yeah. You want my seat? You can have it. Mm -hmm. You want my power and my money and my prestige? You can have it. Mm -hmm. We have to demand it and take it. Mm -hmm. And we cannot demand anything when we don't know what to demand. Mm -hmm. So if we don't know what's on the agenda, if we don't know what they're discussing, if they don't, if we don't know how these conversations behind the horseshoe mm -hmm. impact our everyday life, mm -hmm. because number one, the meeting takes place at three o'clock. 
We can push it back. Most on. most people are at work at three o'clock. Meeting their kids. Meeting them in the car line <laughs> at three o'clock. So does the city government even want these meetings to be accessible? Mm. No, because there's power. When you look at an agenda, that's money, millions of dollars is moving around, mm -hmm. money is being appropriated, people are being <coughs> funded, wow. people are being defunded, people are being appointed to high boards that yeah. make decisions. Wow. It's power in the pages. Uh, and so again, it's our responsibility to make sure that our community, community centers, parks, pools, web club, mm -hmm. I mean for real, the club, mm -hmm. where that we are showing them where their power is because they can't stop anyone Well, they've tried to stop people from attending these meetings but they are public meetings and we can speak at these meetings even yeah. though they tried to limit it yeah. we have the power to do that we just we just have to get with it i mean yeah. you got to show them like they don't know what ordinance means they don't know ordinance means it's an order like it's right. the law right. the difference between the ordinance and the res is a resolution so i think i think we just got to go back and start teaching our people civics yeah. from the understanding what's going on it's good. Um, anything else that y'all think that y'all want to tell the community or push out there like for this year? Because I know November 8th is like super important. Like, <laughs> 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 no, because we got so many people across the state. We got a judge, Rachel and Monroe. And I'm up there looking. I'm like, that judge, I'm doing a pose because I'm ready for them pose, which is just what it looks like. We got a judge race. We got a Senate race down south. We got. Ross Duplessis uh, running for city. Now, Lord knows, and I hope he's, he's going to win. So, we got school board up here, city council, mayor race. This mayor race looks scary, y'all. Man, it is wow. scary. Why y'all say that? The choice, the option. The option. Yeah, I want to ask the people on Facebook when they set aside their options. Tomorrow. I, I, what I've seen on Facebook is that people are not. Right. People are not set I mean, and I don't expect people to be. <laughs> I mean, that's why we have to have some debates. Like, I don't know yes. if Molly gonna do it, or like, <laughs> people promise, <laughs> ASAP, Black Voters Matter, whoever, whoever, whoever. That's we awesome. have to, Yeah, we have to have some candidate conversations. Mm -hmm. We have to have some, like Bricka mentioned, the people's agenda. Like, we have to know what we ask mm -hmm. these folks for, mm -hmm. so we can hold them accountable. Um, so my challenge for people I want people to think, how can they get their people involved in this in this election, right? Of course, you can take five people with you to go vote, right? But it starts before that. Mm -hmm. And I want people to remember, it doesn't end after you vote. Right. When you press that button, good job. Right. But there's more work to do. Mm -hmm. That's the bare minimum. Yeah. And I think why our community is so behind sometimes is because we have to force people and pressure people to do the bare minimum mm. when we should be way past that. Right. Um, so I, I just really challenge people, get engaged somehow, whether it hosts you a block party, hosts you a, a house meeting, mm. you know, go to your church and make it, get on the church announcements mm. and talk right. about this election. Mm. Because not only is it local elections, the highest office in the state, the U.S. Senate, mm. all 64 parishes are voting for this race. Um, and we, we got, got slavery on the ballot. We got slavery on the ballot. Mm -hmm. All 64 parishes. Man, it's in the state constitution. And we got to get it out. We got to get it out. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we do that, we can challenge the 13th Amendment. So, I think I think this race, this race is going to be interesting. It's going to be Ooh. fun. Yeah. A lot of people going to, I know I'm going to be a lot of B's and B's. They ain't going to call me no H's because I, I ain't no H, but I'm going to call me no <laughs> We got buttons, we got masks, we got bracelets, we got all type of swag. Anything. I mean, we just need you to and look, last week when me and Amari went to Lakeside, them people was having to see us. Like literally, Amari didn't think the people who she was. I said, shoot. I mean, I know it was such a family environment. I, I felt like I was at somebody's family reunion, but I was, you know, yeah. like, who was that? But it was a lot of love. No. It was a lot of love, and we, we have to not forget about the joy and the happiness that we black so people fun. deserve. Like, we got to have fun, too. We had so much And fun. it was safe. It was fun. Like, it was no issue. Oh, we had so much. We Look, if we had a ballot, I mean, we had the voting booth there. Everybody would vote. We had people that, that just wanted to go vote. They was ready. They're like, when do we vote? When do we vote today? And we 
What we go for? Oh, that was a bitch. I mean, so many. Yeah, we had so many first time moments. Yeah. Like, she was grabbing a young man. You know, we're like, I ain't voting. You gonna vote now? You know, right. Yeah. I gotta send a word that picture because she got that uh, last picture. Oh, yeah. 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 So I think if we do that in every even the neighborhood, like I want to go to every reunion. Yeah. Every reunion. We go to every reunion. We can we can we can we can get the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can have a way because Amari gonna get a big charter bus. Man, we're gonna have a party to the pole. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm gonna all come up and we got a party to the pole. We party into the poles, man. We're gonna make we're gonna get yang yang twins. Yeah. Dang, yang yang twins are still doing it. I guess if not both. <laughs> If it will well, we play on polls, we can paint the, the buds pink. Then we'll come to Look, the Look, get some chocolate. <laughs> Look, Look we'll, 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 we'll go straight to the club right mm -hmm. afterwards. We, she, like, said, she said go to the paint and I'm still looking for other clubs that have any I don't know where other clubs are. We need all the I'm telling you. All of them. We need the Megan's. Yeah, we need the Cardi's. We need everybody. No one is exempt. Yeah. F and F and F too. Mm -hmm. F and F and F. I think that this this year we're gonna get a lot more people like mm -hmm. out to actually vote. I agree. Because registering is one thing too. Mm -hmm. And getting them out to vote is another. Mm -hmm. So I saw you talking about you going to pick people up. Oh, I told them if I if I look on early voting, you ain't gonna come to your house. I'm picking you up. God, we're threatening to peep out there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. Ain't you Molly's son? Oh, my goodness. Because I know your grandma. I know your <laughs> grandma and your cousin. I like this. Yeah. Yeah. She had people on the spot. So I think I had one show. Up. Yeah, we had one little boy. He was 22. He was like, I ain't going to vote. I said, What you mean? You ain't going to vote. Yes, you is. Man, I had a 20 minute conversation with him why you should vote. I left him alone. He went back looking for a bar. He went to the booth. Yeah, and he registered too. Yeah, he, he registered. Well, yeah. a quick story for me because um, I haven't always been like this. Mm -hmm. And I was in, um, what is it, like civics or something like that. And my professor was like, Jazz, you're not registered to vote. Mm -hmm. I don't care about that stuff. Mm -hmm. He said, You don't care. She said, if you don't write me a five-page essay on why it's important to vote, you won't be passing your class. Oh, I love your teacher. I, mean, I love her, too. So I she made that. me research everything. Like, I had to write this five-page essay. And y'all, when I say when I got done researching and mm -hmm. going over I You got to dream about voting, it. Man, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wow. I yeah. see why it's like such a battle, like mm -hmm. a real battle. Mm -hmm. It was a battle for our ancestors, but I see it's so much power in voting and they want us to feel like it don't count. They want us like, when people say all that, when they was acting like me, they want us to be like that. Yes. That's that's the, that's the agenda to make them feel, to make us feel like it don't count. So when you say that out loud and when you feel like that and you let people know that you feel like that, mm -hmm. it's like, we don't have to worry about that one. Woo! Yeah. It's one vote gonna be out forever, you know? So it's important, y'all. Like, that's, that's literally why our ancestors fought so hard, why these women fight so hard. 365, I told y'all, I'll take a break. <laughs> I do. I can't take no break unless you work. Exactly. <laughs> three, 365 days. You know, so it that's a lot of work. That's a lot of sacrifice. Amari is mommy right now. <laughs> but still, she got this information out. She came. She showed love for me, Brika. She always had a Katie Bob. <laughs> Katie Bob be with a suitcase <laughs> <of> my bed. <laughs> Baby, you don't have to worry about cake balls, but she she <laughs> <don't worry about laughs> <cake balls. laughs> Look, she an actionist. Don't play with her. Baby, I wanna have on a panel with, with the teenagers. Oh, with the college students. A statewide panel. A statewide panel. I'm the youngest baby up there. It kill you.
Okay, so that was a great interview with Amari and Rika. And um, now we have Mr. Kizzy Montgomery. He is running for a city councilman for District A. All right, so Mr. Kizzy, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to introduce yourself. Okay, thank you, Ms. Jasmine. Uh, my name is Kizzy Montgomery. I'm running for District A. Um, 44 years old, I have two kids. Um, my son is 12, my daughter is seven. They the heartbeat of the things that I do and why I push so hard to do the things that I do. Um, not only that, but part of the reason why I'm running for District A is because I've been that person that been convicted of a convicted felon and um, I've been an advocate for the community as well. You know, I did my time, got out, and I seen that there was a need for the change, you mm -hmm. know, especially when it comes to people that's getting out of prison. You right. know, everybody want to, you know, don't want to give them a second chance in life. But mm -hmm. I realized that it starts with us first. You know, right. it also we have to have that the zeal to have God on our side also. And when we have that on our, when we have God on our side, and not only God on our side, but we have to have the mind frame. We got to transform our mind. And, the way that we think about a lot of things. You know, it's, we look in the scripture where the scripture said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Mm -hmm. And I stick to that because when we transform this right here, we can do anything that we want to do. Yes. And that's why I go hard because I want to let people that been in my situation, that's been struggling, that had to go through hard time, realize that you can do anything that you want to when you put your mind to it. Right. You know, not only I got it was some times that I went to places and they said, No, you can't do it because of that, but I didn't let that determine what I need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, No, nah, I'm gonna let you know what show you what God's gonna do. Right. I can also remember back um when I was in college, mm -hmm. they told me that I would never be able to work in the health field. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it, God blessed me and gave me the job before I finished school. Wow. So I was already working in my field before I finished school. And I had to go back and let my professor know and say, hey, you remember what you said? Oh. Now I'm going to show you what God did. Wow. And so that's why I say, you know, when you trust in God and believe that what God says in his word yes. will come to pass. Yes. And you see the manifestation of it. And that's what right. I did. That's the type. That's what I live and I base everything that I do. I check in with God before I do anything. And he the one that leads and directs me. So that's part of the reason and main reason why I go hard for I do what I do, mm -hmm. you know, um, running for the district. I'm trying to get people that look like me, not just only look like me, but other people that don't look like me, right. that's been struggling, that that been through the trenches and to realize that we can make a difference. We have to change our way of thinking. And when we do that, we give back to the community. That's right. And that's what I've been doing. I've been giving back to my community, you know, out of my own pockets, you yeah. know. You know, the people that, you know, struggling, I didn't help um, start um, programs at Rockbridge. That's why I'm, I'm instructor over there. I teach on phlebotomy. I started the phlebotomy program over there. Awesome. So we've been successful with that. Um, you got a lot of people jobs. You got a lot of people passing through the class. So it's a great program over there also. Um, I used to work with um, Blue Cliff also mm -hmm. until they moved. Yeah. Um, I'm in a mentoring program, Daniel 120. Well, you know, we I'm one of the mentors over there. We help um young kids and eighteen to twenty five as well, you know, to try okay. to motivate them and get them back on their feet and let them know that, you know, they are somebody, you That's know. Right. Cause a lot of times, you know, growing up in the communities mm -hmm. where we live at, you know, we see killing, we see poverty, we see lack of education. But it got to be somebody that stands up and say, Hey, you can do it encouragement sometimes yeah. that's all we need just a little encouragement a little that's support right. because when you come out into a situation you don't have a support system then guess what you go back to the same mm -hmm. cycle and you end up being in the same situation over and over again and i never forget when um while i was incarcerated you know the deputy told me that i was going to never amount to anything i was going to be in and out of jail because wow. he said anybody that's been locked up past three years said they become institutionalized wow. but i had to break that cycle mm. and so 
I've been out for since 2005. Let's take a break and do a round of applause for you today. Because a lot of men in our community and even men outside of our community, you know, once they are incarcerated, a lot of times they do get that same speech that you got. Like, you're never going, you're going to be back. I'll see you, you know. And it's not a thing to laugh or joke about. And you came out of that. You came out with a plan. And you did better for yourself. And we are proud of you for that. Proud of you for being a strong, black, proud man and now running for city councilman. That is awesome. That is really awesome. So um, I heard you say a lot about God, and that's great. And I know that you probably feel that he orders your steps to yes. run for city councilman. Yes. So what's another reason why you want to run for city councilman? Well, another reason is um, I look at you know the crime, I look at the education, I look at the poverty that we're in, and I want to be able to not only that, but just going around talking to the people, you know, and you know they telling me that they try to get in touch with their city officials, and nobody want to listen to them, mm -hmm. nobody want to get their input, and see that's what I want to change right there. I want yeah. to be that person that. You can be able to reach me, you can be able to come to me. Before I make any type of decision or anything, I check in with the people first. I let yeah. the people make the decision. Because the only thing I am, I'm just an advocate for the people. I want to go up there, listen to what they have to say. We all come to an agreement. And then I go and I push the, push the agenda that they want mm. to make happen. Okay. And where we at now with the city councilman, just basically, if something needs to be done, they just say, hey, we're going to vote on this. This is what it's going to be without even checking in with the people and see mm. what the people want. So yes. that's something that I would like to change. Yes. And, you know, bringing jobs back into the communities. And okay. um, not only that, but things for our youth. You know, I'm, I'm big on youth because I believe that's our, that's our future. That's what we're heading to. Right. You know, our youth. If we're not training our youth up to be successful, then by the time they get to our age, and being able to run for different stuff, mm -hmm. we're gonna be in trouble. Yes. You know, yes. so we should be, um, I would never forget, um, I was talking to Mr. Cox, uh, Senator Cox, mm -hmm. and he had said, uh, told me, said that the thing that bothers him the most is that we have young men and women that are leaders that want to run for things, but the older generation is not coming back to groom them in a way that they're supposed mm -hmm. to be groomed. Yeah. And we somewhere we got to stop the cycle. Yeah. And so somebody got to stop all the generational curses. Right. And come in and step up and say, hey, I'll take that initiative. Right. To make a difference. So that's, um, and with bringing, just trying to build back up the communities and stuff, you know. Like I want to do like after school programs and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, hold these churches accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, for all, we got a thousand churches on each corner. Mm -hmm. And ain't now one of them open throughout the week only for Bible study and church service. Mm. And that's sad. Because guess what? The church, the leaders in the church is supposed to be the pillar of the community. Yeah. They're supposed to be reaching out there, bringing them, but they're still worried about the things on the inside where we got all these people on the outside that's hurting yeah. and that needs it. So why not open up your community center mm. inside your church? Bring the young people in, do professional development, you know, yeah. do all type of stuff like yeah. that, you know, to be able to get the kids back on track. And I believe we'll see less crime mm. and motivating a lot of um, people in the neighborhood as well. I think so, too. I think so, too. So um, I heard you talk about, <clears throat> um, like, the things that the city councilmen are really not doing, the tools they're not using, the resources they're not giving out to the people. Um, and Brika and Amara, we just got done talking about the importance of going to the city council meeting. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you would want a lot of people to really come to like we want we want people to feel the city council meetings like they feel church right. we want them to feel it like they feel the concerts right. and um i don't think they really know the importance of going to the city council meeting 
voicing their concerns about their neighborhoods. And a lot of our people don't even know who their city councilman is, you know, or that they work for us. So what's your strategy on getting that information out and getting like your people in your district to come to the city council meetings to voice their concerns, you know, not just to you, but to the entire council. Well, one of the things that, like I said, we have to go back on helping the people change their mind, the way of thinking about things. Um, it's a lot of stuff that has happened throughout the years that have caused people to lose faith in the city council. And you know, not only that, but the city officials, period. Yeah. And so, it's going to take work to build that trust and that relationship back up again. Mm -hmm. But once they see that, okay, we got somebody that's really working for us, mm -hmm. then you're going to start seeing people come back in okay. and get back on board again. But like I said, it got to be something that we continue to do, mm -hmm. not just when you first get in there and then yeah. once you've been in there by a couple of months, then everything is over with. Right. We have to continue to do it because that's our job. You know? Right. We have to continue right. to keep that relationship built. You know, one thing that um I told my team is that what I want to try to implement is that if I'm over here in this area right here, mm -hmm. and then there's another meeting going over here that a program or something going on, I want to be able to send one of my team over there, members okay. over there, mm -hmm. to represent you know for the team for right. that district. Right. And once we do that right there. That's because I wasn't there. I still got the information that is needed in the telephone number and contact so mm -hmm. I can be able to reach back out to them and set up a meeting. So they won't feel left out and say, mm -hmm. okay, well, he's not interested or he don't want to have anything to do with me because that's a lot of things that I've been hearing in the community. Yeah. You know, so I want to try to make a change in doing stuff like that and, you know, hold me accountable. Yeah. Know? Yeah. That's, that's Accountability. Yes. yes. That's it, it's very important. Mm -hmm. Um, we spoke about that as well, like how important it is to register to vote yes. and then how important it is to actually go and vote mm -hmm. and then how important it is to know who and what you're voting for and then how important it is to not drop the ball after you vote, but to keep watching what their candidates, what those candidates that you voted for, what they're doing, are they keeping their promises? So we spoke about that, like how do you hold these people accountable after we've already voted for them? And once we voted for them, how do we get, how do we start a recall if they're not um, taking that accountability? Well, for me personally, for the thing that I would like to do is um, basically, if there's any ideas or agenda that's on, up there on the board, mm -hmm. I want to be able to call the town meeting Mm -hmm. Get with the people and say, and have everybody have a piece of paper out there that say they agree or they don't agree, mm -hmm. and let the people make the decision. Yeah. So it won't all everything won't fall back on the, you know, the, the council person. Right. Right. Because see, this is what you guys chose, mm -hmm. and so, like I said, I'm a I'm the representative mm -hmm. for that community. That's right. That's right. And whatever the people want, that's what I'm gonna go and push for. Mm -hmm. and so. I think by getting them involved and active yeah. in it, that's gonna help. they're gonna be like, okay, then well, let's check on this, and make sure that what we did, you know, just like the kids, right. when you give a kid something, or you tell them to check on it right there, they're gonna continue to check on it mm -hmm. until they see progress. Right. And that's with us too as adults. We just wanna be feel like we're a part of something. Right. And if we don't feel like we're a part of something, we're not gonna take any interest in it. Gotcha. Gotcha. So. So your, your strategy and your objective is to get the people involved, make sure they know the resources they have available through the town hall meetings, um, making sure they're coming to the city council meetings, making sure they have that information as to what's going on in their district and what you can do to help. Um, I think that's great that you want to have that open door policy for the people in your district. Is there anything else you want to share? Um, that's, that's asking the people is that, you know, whether if I'm in there or somebody else in there, you know, make sure that you're getting involved. Like you said, going to the town and meetings and just getting involved with the community. And if you see things like any type of activities that's out there, we have to change that mindset from 
snitches get in stitches because mm-hmm. I hear that a lot when I'm going out there. They don't want to report crime and stuff like that. We got to get away from that because yeah. one thing about when you go into other communities, you know, they stick together. And if they see any activity that's not supposed to be in that community, guess what? Regardless of snitches getting stitches, yes, they're going to inform They call them. Yes. They're so, calling on their neighbor's son. Yes. They, I they saw are. Bobby go through that window. Yes. They're calling. Yes. So, so yes. that's what we have to do is we want to take back our community again. Mm. You know, we got to stand up in the community. We can't expect the police to do the job because we the one that live there 24-7. That's right. So that's we right. have to take back our own community. That's right. And, you know, we got to keep up the upkeeping of our community, you mm. know. You know, a lot of times people ask, well, why they not doing this? Why this fund is not coming through there? And sometimes it don't be that the people don't push the issue. But it's just like, say, for instance, if you have a child, mm-hmm. you tell them you want them to clean up their room. They clean up the room and they continue to mess it up and mess it up. And they want something from you. Mm-hmm. You're not going to reward them no. if they keep it a mess. Right. So you only reward them when they keep the upkeeping of it. Right. And that's what we have to do. And, you know, if we can do that right there, I believe, man, our communities can, can blossom. That's good. It can blossom. That's good. So... Well, that was a good, good conversation, Mr. Kenzie. And I mean, you have my vote. Thank you. Thank um, you. We're going to do some more, you know, talking about how we can get this information out, how we can get people to know who to vote for, what to vote for, and, you know, what district they're in. Um, we definitely know that it's going to be a lot of hard work. Yes. But I believe that everyone that I've interviewed today, they are willing to do the work. Right. Um, so. And that's the difference, right? Yes, there. yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Kenzie. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I hopefully you guys register to vote. Yes. So that you can vote, cash your vote. Um, Early voting is a good thing, too. Yeah. Early voting. <laughs> because it's a lot of, when you wait to the last minute to do anything in life, mm. you find a lot of obstacles that try to come up and hinder it. Wow. So, early vote is a big plus. It's a big plus. Awesome, awesome. And also, dig your information, get your information on, on people mm. that's in your district that um, you have to go vote for. Research them. Don't just go because of popularity. Yeah. Because a lot of times we go because, okay, this was popular. Mm-hmm. You know, make sure you do your research. It's just like going out there, getting a house or getting a car. You're going to research it before you purchase it. Yeah. And so these are the people that you're going to have in your city, in your district, that you want to make sure that you're picking the right candidate. Yes, so. yes. So do your research and make sure... You know exactly who you're voting for and make sure you're staying consistent with being able to hold these people accountable. So thank you. Our time is up now and it's my life. It's my life.